Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be looking at monetary incentives. Now this will be part one for monetary incentives and then we'll have part two next week. For part one, we're gonna do an overview and an introduction of what monetary incentives are and we're also just gonna focus on calculations. Next week for part two, you're gonna focus on analyzing and comparing different monetary incentives. Now let's go ahead and start with what these words mean. When we hear the word monetary, that means money. And incentives are reasons for customers to come to the website or come to a store to make a purchase. Below are some of the common monetary incentives used by retailers to obtain your purchase. The first type that you have to know about are sales. When an item is on sale, the cost of the item is reduced for a period of time. Reduced means lowered. And this could be by a percentage, it could be buy one, get one half off, buy one, get one free, or it could be reduced by a dollar amount. The next type we have are rebates. When a customer uses a rebate, they pay the full cost first, they pay the full amount of the item, and then they submit a reimbursement, a reimbursement to the manufacturer. And what that means, reimbursement, what that means is that you will get some money back in the mail or through um, electronically. It could be a percentage back or a dollar amount, but you'll get that back from the manufacturer. The last type you need to know about are coupons. When a coupon is used, the value of the coupon is deducted from the price of the item, deducted meaning taken away or subtracted. Some coupons are a percentage a percentage and some are a dollar amount so you could have a paper coupon or a coupon on your phone or from the website and it could be 20% off 30% off or it could be a dollar amount off it could also be a fraction off so now we're gonna look at the calculation part these are the types of things we are gonna be looking at now we have to calculate them so for our example, Bianca is shopping around town in order to purchase a computer that is regularly priced at $800. So this is the price we're gonna be looking at. And we're gonna look at three different things. We're gonna look at the what the price would be if 15% was off, um, if 150 per, um, $150 rebate was applied, and also if we have a fraction off. So we're gonna look at all three types. Now. In your last video, when you were working on sales and income tax, we were calculating the percent. What percent is the sale, is the sale or the disc, uh, sorry, the sales tax? What percent is the actual income tax? Um, for this one, we have to calculate the amount taken off. We're gonna be subtracting. With sales tax, we added. For income tax, you would um, subtract that. For all of these sales, you would subtract this amount from the purchase price. So we're gonna do both parts today. Let's go ahead and start with part A, 15% off. Now, you did this with the sales tax and income tax where you had the percent and you had to find out how much, um, how much money that actually is. So go ahead and calculate that now. What would be 15% of $800? Now I'm gonna use the strategy we used last time where we divided our percent by 100 Move the decimal two places to the left and got 15 hundredths. Now remember, all you have to do is multiply 800 times 15 hundredths. And what we get for that amount is $120 whenever you multiply that. So that means 15% of 800 is $120. So that is the discount itself. That's part one. The next part is, what would the sale price be with 15% off? Now for the sale price, you're taking the 800 and you're having to subtract the $120. Now some people just wanna subtract 15, but remember 15, it's 15%. We don't know how many dollars that is. That's why we calculated that first. Now we're going to subtract. When we subtract 800 minus 120, we get a sale price of $680. So if it's 15% off, we have the sale amount of 120, we have the, or the coupon amount, um, or the discount, and then we also have the sale price. So we're calculating both here. 
Now we're going to look at the next one. We're going to look at a $150 rebate. We already have the dollar amount for this one. So what would be the sale price with a $150 rebate? Since we already have the dollar amount, all we have to do is subtract 800 minus 150, and that gives us a sell price of $650. So we actually like when they just give us a dollar amount because it's one less step in our process. Okay, now let's look at C. C says one fourth off. Now it's been a little while since we have found a fraction of something, but remember when you're finding a fraction of something, you're gonna take your whole amount and you're gonna multiply it by that fraction. Before I let you find what one fourth is, remember that you need to put your whole number over one before you multiply your fraction. So what would one fourth of 800 be? Now, you can either just multiply this or you could simplify before you multiply. I'm gonna go ahead and just multiply to remind you of the steps. 800 times one is 800. We multiply our numerators and then we multiply our denominators. One times four is four. And all we have to do now is simplify by dividing. 800 divided by four, which equals 200. Now you could have also simplified before you multiplied, you could have canceled out your ones. You could have um, divided four divided by four to get one and 800 divided by four to get 200. Either way, you end up with 200 over one or 200. So either way is fine. So here we have our discount amount, $200. And so when we take a fourth off the price, what is the sell price? So now we take our 800 and we subtract the 200 to get the sell price of $600. So here you have an example of whenever you have a percent off, um, what you have to do first is multiply by the decimal to get the sale amount, then subtract. When you have a dollar amount, you just subtract it. And when you have a fraction, you have to multiply that fraction by the total to get the sale amount, and then you subtract. So you may wanna refer back to this depending on what kind of practice you're working on. And remember next week, we would extend it by comparing these different sale prices and which one would be the best choice. I'll go ahead and ask you though, which one do you think would be the best choice, A, B, or C? C would be the best choice because you have the highest discount and therefore the lowest sale price. See you next time for part two.